Okay, you are watching now the second part of the tips and tricks I'm showing. There's a video before this that you can watch, but this is the second video now. And hope you enjoy it. And remember, thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. So what you're trying to do is you have to melt this plastic. If there's a torch down, there's plastic. There's a little plastic on this. Let me show you. You cannot hardly see it, but there's pla you see the plastic? I can peel it. See the plastic? I'm peeling the plastic. You burn the plastic off and you melt the two together. Look. Let me show you now. small torch is going slow but look the stuff is melted together there you see that you see the plastic is melted that's how it's done a bigger torch will do it really good let me show you get a bigger torch so this is a bigger torch watch see that that's what's gonna make the thing melt and I want to melt this top this more than the base. You don't want to melt the base. Look, it's over, overheating there. It's already bubbling. You don't want to do that. So when I when I heat the top here, the flame automatically goes to the base. You don't need to heat the base. This from Magnum Magnum torches. I love these Magnum torches. They come in a kit like a small uh, detail torch and a big torch like this. Alright, so I got the base down. I mean a filler. This is just a filler. I'm gonna roll this side back a little bit. Watch my other videos on how to torch because I'm just making a fuller here. I'm not really. I'm going to build up another layer on top there to make this roof slightly higher in the middle, so water will never sit on the on the, on the inside of this roof on the, on the middle. Okay. A little bit. Pull the back like this. Now I'm out, now I have to put more heat on this uh, torch down here because it's a thicker material and needs more heat to melt the two together. Okay. Melting there, see that? It's melting there. Alright. Alright, so I smooth it out, make sure they this is just a fuller, I don't need to torch it that well, but I'm just showing you. Oh, by the way, another trick. Let me show you another trick. When you come to the end lap, when you torch two, th two, two things together, when you come to the end lap, this is very important. When you come to the end lap and you want to, you, you never, you never want to let this flap down like that. That is horrible. You never flap like that. You never let it flap like that. You always work from a, a triangle. Let me show you. So I come to the end. So I put this triangle down here. You see that? It's very hard to do it on the position I am. But now, watch this. I have this triangle. See this? So I, I start there. And I put the triangle here like this. See this trick? You always work with a triangle. And look, it's not flapping down. I'm controlling it with my trowel. See? Beautiful. 
everything was controlled properly. So this is a little bit about torching, but I'm not trying to teach you how to torch. This is too small a surface to, to show you. Anyway, um, I want to put another fillet in the middle here, just to make it higher in the middle. Everything sticks to this. All right. So here we go. I'm doing the same thing just to, as a filler. So I'm building this up in the middle, in the center of this, so water will not will run up to the edge. That's what I'm doing here. So do the same thing. Heat it up a little bit. I have stuck to my trunk. See that? Now this is just a filler, it's not really torched all the way. But I have now built up in the middle that water will run off once once it rains. So now I'm gonna put the cap sheet. Okay. Right there. I hope I have enough. Go. This is a peel and stick. I took the plastic off and I'm gonna torch it to this. I'm gonna show you how good this peel and stick is without torching it, but I'm gonna torch this one. Very hard because it's sticking to everything. So let me show you something very unbelievable. I just rolled this peel and stick out and now I want to roll it back. Watch, it's stuck. I can barely pull it out. It's, it sticks so well. Look, you gotta, you gotta pull hard on this just to get it off. Here's the problem. It sticks well when it's hot. In the winter, it gets hard, it, it will cool down and water will come in because look how it sticks to this granular. Look, it's sticking. The hotter it gets, the more it will stick. Look here, it's sticking here. But I cannot rely on that on a flat roof. It will pop loose in the winter. If you have a slanted roof, no problem. You have a, you have a flat roof like this, you cannot do that. It will come loose. So what I do is, I don't rely on its glue to stick to the metal. Very, 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 very important. What you need to do is, I take the car neck and I put a thin bead of car neck, 66 in this case. Oh, I got it on a drip edge on the outside. I put a thin bead like that, okay? You see that? A thin bead of uh, tar all the way on the edge. This way I'm more secure it will not come loose. It will cure over three months or four months but the, the adhesive gets hard and then it doesn't stick so that's what I do. I use this corner and uh, uh, there. Okay. Right now, take this off, and then I heat this up. You really don't need to torch it. Really don't need to. I'm just doing it to show you. I do a triangle again, and look, the heat will not affect the metal there. A lot of people want to put hundreds of nails in this metal because when they come with a torch it will warp the metal. That's why I don't do that. You put tar over that, the tar dissipates the heat, it doesn't warp the metal. That's a trick. Okay, so you never torch 
to a metal, you put tar on it like Karnak, and then you torch your membrane to them to that tar. See like that? And then And that's it. Now, I just smooth this down on the edge like that. And I know this roof is slightly built up. You can see there's a, there's a little higher spot there and it comes down and water will run off. That's nice, okay? So now we're gonna do a seam. You can see, I just rolled this out and pull, peel the plastic back and I can almost not take it off. It, you don't need to torch it. It's really good this peel and stick, but it, the seams will not be sealed properly. So you gotta you gotta um, put a bead of tar because you cannot get a flame on this metal as well. It will warp, so you cannot do that. So that's how I do it. Works fantastic. So. Always have your Karnak, always have your Karnak with you, always. That's my go-to product. And I put a bead like that, half an inch from the side, and I can roll out now. Um, I can roll out the, the membrane, but I'm torching the, the look at this. Look at that, I'm torching the seam because if it glued, self-glued, it water will come in. This is not a good seal, you have to torch it. So if you're gonna have peel and stick, you buy it from Liberty or whatever, you have to torch it. See there? And I'm doing my triangle again. It, I heat it up and that's it make sure you pre apply pressure on that seam make sure now that seam will never leak okay gotta do the same with the rest peel this back here I cannot get it back see it looks like it's sticking but that's because it's hot it's, it's an 85 or something today <sighs> So I'm gonna peel it back. There you go. You can see where it stuck, where it melted together, okay? And then where the tar is here. Okay, so do it like this. Okay. A bit of tar on either side, all the metal. And then I'm gonna heat up the seam and melt the seam together, okay? All right, that's it. Now, now I can melt the seam together. Again, watch the technique. All right, I got that seam all melted together and I got the edges sealed with the tar. The next step, is to cut this edge nice and smooth and you can just do it like this you take your straight blade okay hope you see that you see that straight blade take a straight blade like that not a hook blade and you go on a metal on the edge of this metal and you glide your metal blade onto the met uh, your your blade onto that metal onto that straight to that it's tough with uh, double membrane but that's how you do it, okay? You glide it onto that metal drip edge. Just like that. Okay? That's how you do it. You glide it on there, and then you have a... Do one more here, okay? You cut your membrane. Just like... Alright. 
I want to share with you two other things that I did not uh, start off with. The reason why you want a nice heavy duty drip edge and a, and a long drip edge is to cover the wood behind this. This is number one. But also, if you have a gutter, always make sure that the drip edge goes over the gutter like that. You see that? You want it over the gutter. You don't want it to be like that. Always like underneath there, so when water comes down, it flows right into the gutter, and you never have water coming behind the gutter, rotting out the fascia board. That's very, very important. Now, if you have the shorter drippage, there's a kick there, and it kicks out the water, but it's not always working, and your gutter has to be flushed to the fascia board. That's another trick. Another trick is, I'm going to show you what I use for shoes. Very important. This material, when you torch it, right if you roll and you kick it with your, with your foot, the roll, right after, let me take my shoe off. Once you kick it off and you use uh, uh, your, your foot to cook, kick the roll, behind it's soft. So you want a shoe that will not score or scar the the, the material. So you want a, a kind of a, a, a flat shoe, a flat sole. I use uh, um, Dr. Martin's excellent, excellent shoe for this. Now, it, it's very comfortable, a little bit expensive, but like $100, $120, but they also don't have laces. Uh, the other one I would use is Chippewa. See Chippewa? Chippewa is the best, best shoe for, boot, for, for a, a boot for a torching, but laces, they burn. This one started burning already, you see it there? So you want, but you knew, look at the flat sole, beautiful flat sole, you see that? I like that. So uh, Dr. Martins has a relatively flat sole, but no, no laces. You won't burn it, you burn, you will burn your laces on your boot if you start torching because your torch goes close to your boot all the time when, you, when you're rolling. But um, that's why I use both of these boots. In the winter when it's cold I use uh, Chippewa and in the summer I use Dr. Martens. But now I've actually changed to Dr. Martens for all season. You can see I burned this a little bit. You can see the rubber. Look at that. <laughs> Got a little bit hot there. Anyway, that's just about the boot. Um, when you buy trowels, and uh, let me just add another thing, as I go, that you, this is called a gauging trowel. See that? That's a gauging trowel because it's got a round bull, uh, nose at the front. See that? Uh, don't buy um, Marshalltown at Home Depot. It's a plastic handle. They come loose all the time. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible. I, I got this, uh, this is G-Force. If you can get G-Force, G and then Force, um, or there are other ones, but this, ha this has done me very well. They're the best so far I've been using. Uh, I cannot tell you what knife to use. I use Milwaukee, but they also give me trouble. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really hope I taught you something. I hope this video turns out well. If you liked it, please thumbs up and subscribe. But I am the Flat Roof Doctor. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two with my friend Bud Cassell. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's your roof.